Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a great lunch and you're feeling energized for the rest of uh, day one. Perfect. Okay, so we'll start. Now, I forgot to do this earlier, so I just want to make sure that everybody's at the right event. I know that you've registered, but we just want to check. So I have a question for you, and I want a show of hands, okay? So who here is looking for happiness? It's about half the room. And the rest of you, or did you already find happiness, or you're not looking for happiness? So who, everybody's looking for happiness? Yes? Okay, so you are in the right event. Good, good. <laughs> Perfect. So next up, we have the poet, uh, a poet and a rapper from Oakland, California, Baraka Blue. Having performed all over North America, the Middle East, Africa, Asia, and Europe, his original work merges spoken word poetry with the tradition of poets such as Rumi and Hafiz. This is a man who continuously impresses the global artist community, and in addition to teaching others and leading creative work, writing workshops internationally, he also has an album, Majnoon's Lost Memoir, under his belt. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Baraka Blue. Bismillah, Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. MashaAllah. Um, is everybody feeling nice and tired after lunch? It's like the worst time to perform is after lunch. Everybody's in a food coma. Especially because here you eat so much rice, so you're like, I need a nap. Alhamdulillah, uh, it's an honor and a blessing to be here. As our teachers tell us, everything worth doing should begin with a dua. So I'm going to begin with a dua. This dua is also a poem. So you're going to hear that. But the special reason that I open with this is because after every line of the poem, you guys get to be the co-poets in this poem by saying amin. All right? But inshallah, we'll make this with the intention that it helps us all wake up. So I, I don't want to have like a half asleep, I mean, like, I mean, but like, a, I mean. And also, one of the secrets of collectively saying, I mean, that our teachers tell us is that it's hoped that the dua will then be answered according to the most sincere heart in the room. And who is the most sincere heart in the room? What if somebody raised their hand? <laughs> And of course, that's a secret that only Allah knows, but it's usually the person that is the most brokenhearted and who sees themselves as the least in the room. All right, you ready? May your day be filled with love and light. May your wrongs be right. May your songs be tight. May your words give sight. May your newer shine bright. May you always be on the righteous side of the fight. May your lovers be loyal, may your soil be fertile. May your khakis stay creased, may your locks stay oiled. May your plans never get foiled. May your plot thicken. May your chicken be halal. May your style be sufficient. May your soul be free of its prison. May Allah increase you in your vision. May you find everything you've been missing. May you awake for prayer before the sun has risen. When you speak, may your audience listen. May you never feel trapped in the system. May you sire many righteous children who will act on prophetic tradition. May you always have food on your plate. May you learn from every mistake. May you rise above all the hate. And may Allah increase you in your state. May you never pretend that you are what you ain't. May your friends be real and never be fake. May your rent never have to be late. And may your health always be great. May Allah forgive every sin. Now and forever if you fall to begin. And may you always stay close with your kin. And may he make all your enemies friends. May he make reality of your plans. May your present be pleasant. May you have a good end. May your heart be purified of his flaws. And may you act according to the laws that were revealed in the book of Allah. And may he catch you whenever you fall. May the one guide you to the truth. When you doubt, may he show you the proof. May you be like the Ahla Suf. 
with the wisdom of the elders, the energy of the youth. May he accept your prayers and your fast, the very first all the way to the last, and remove obstacles that you have. And may you receive everything that you ask. May you never have regret for your past and receive mercy, not the wrath. And as you travel down your personal path, may you always have a reason to laugh. I mean, give yourself a round of applause. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. You all get ijazah and Amin. A plus. Alhamdulillah. I wanted to thank the uh, Sacred Path of Love, all the volunteers and everybody who sacrificed to allow us to be here. It's so easy for us as the performers or speakers to just come and speak and people are like, that's great. But behind the scenes, there's always a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice and a lot of commitment. So can we give a round of applause to everybody who's put on this event? One of the things that makes me excited to be here is that the theme, the themes rather, of this week and are very real, right? We're supposed to be keeping it real. And we're supposed to be talking about the honest aspects of life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I became Muslim over a decade ago, about 12 years ago. And one of the beautiful things to me that came through in first studying about Islam was that it's not just about praying five times a day, which seems like a lot, by the way, when you haven't been praying regularly. Five times? You guys pray five times? And it's not fasting Ramadan. It's not just these outward acts of ibadah, but what really struck me about Islam is that there's detailed prescriptions, if we talk about that, prescriptions for every aspect of life. So there's something you say when you step in a room and when you step out of a room. And when you step in a specific building, and when you step out of a specific building, there's something you say when you wake up, and when you go to sleep, and for basically every breath in between. And what was obvious to me from that very beginning is that it's not just about, you know, memorizing words, and I said the right word at the right time, but it's about these keys which allow you to be present with Allah at every second, in every instance. Because I realized that for me, and of course when you become Muslim this doesn't change overnight, but so many of us, we're kind of like sleepwalking through our day. You ever like drive to work or drive home and then you get there and you're like, I don't even remember turning or the whole journey I was somewhere else. But this, this means and this method to be present and to remember what we're doing here. Um, one of the beautiful uh, books that I read when I was first Muslim was the Ihya al Medina of Imam Ghazali. Tomorrow I'm going to speak a bit more about, uh, I think the topic they gave me is finding your purpose, so I'll speak about that. But one thing that Imam Ghazali does in this book is that he was someone who was a great scholar teaching about Islam. He was like the number one right, professor of his day. But he came to this crisis of faith because at some point he said, I'm talking about it, but I'm not really living it all the way. And it's interesting and it's encouraging for us as people who are just, you know, not the greatest scholars of our day, let's put it that way, who may feel like we're falling short, to hear that someone of the great stature of Imam al-Ghazali, one of the greatest scholars of our ummah, 
himself had these self-doubts and this actual crisis of faith. And I think we live in a time which, if you look around, if you look on the news, it can be difficult to be a Muslim, right? And I think about Islam as like a map. And a lot of people, in my country for instance, they assume that the map is wrong because they look around and they say a lot of people with the map seem pretty lost. But don't assume the map is wrong just because some people with the map are lost. And that's really what, inshallah, we'll talk about this weekend is that Islam as a path. Islam not just as an identity. And now we live in an age of identity Islam and identity this and identity that, which is one level and it's not necessarily bad, but it's the surface. And when people come up to me or other people that convert, they always say, you guys are better than us. You converted to Islam. We were born Muslim. And that's not true, obviously. But what I see in that is that a lot of people that are born Muslim, they just think, okay, that's just something that I am. But people that become Muslim, they see it as a path. That this is something that I'm going to use. This is the map that I'm going to define my life by. And that's going to help me navigate the world. Anyway, I want to recite a poem about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And the reason I bring up Imam Ghazali is because he went away from his pro professorship to walk the path. And not just to study the map. Because the map is not the terrain. The map is not the terrain. And if you just look at the map all the time, that doesn't mean that you've been to the destination, right? The map is something you're supposed to use to get to the destination. And Imam Ghazali basically said, I was speaking about the map, but I wasn't actually walking the path to its destination. And so I had to leave my professorship to make sure the destination was real. And he found that the destination was real, according to his confirmation. And in that state, in his seclusion, he wrote the Ihya al Madin. And it's 40 books which deal with every aspect of life. And he's saying, Islam is not just praying and fasting. There is a book of prayer and there is a book of fasting, but there's also a book of friendship. Because how we relate to our friends should also be the means that we draw near to Allah. And there's a book of marriage because how we relate to our spouse is just as much about our relationship with Allah as our prayer and our fasting. And there's a book about eating because how we relate to our food is just as much about how we relate to Allah as our praying. And it goes on to every aspect of life. But what's interesting about that 40 books, hopefully we can talk about it more tomorrow, is that right in the middle, the 20th book, do you know what book he puts as the 20th book? Anyone? The book about the character of the Prophet Muhammad And he was very intentional about the actual architecture of this book. And the reason that he put this as the 20th is because this is what holds it all together. Because we are human beings and we need human examples. We need it to be concrete. We don't just deal in abstractions, but we need exemplars. So the Prophet ﷺ is the one who embodied the way to be present and to be aware and to have taqwa. And to have that ihsan, to worship Allah as if we see him and if we don't see him, to know that he sees us in every breath and in every moment. So I read that book. Uh, a section of that book was translated by Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad, who I know has been here. And so I wrote this poem using that description of the Prophet, peace be upon him, from Imam Ghazali, which is about a thousand years old. And this is the poem. But when you, when you hear it, if you like, you could close your eyes or you can keep them open, but try to imagine the Prophet, because it's not just a description of a mythical character, but it's someone that we should 
we should see in our mind's eye. Can you imagine one who was the gentlest of men while being the most brave and just of all who've been? One who conquered all desires of self that make men weak, who granted all who asked him precisely what they seek, whom only jewels poured out his mouth whenever he would speak, who was the gem amongst the stones of men who shined unique. A selflessness and generosity that some would say was merely myth until they'd seen the lovers of his way who used to mend his sandals and used to patch his clothes, who used to serve his family whenever he was home, who had a noble shyness not gazing long upon a face who honored all he ever met, be they king or be they slave, who always found himself at home the most amongst the poor, who never angered for himself, but only for his Lord, always just, always truthful, conscious of the one, even if it brought discomfort to himself and those he loved. A satiated stomach his whole life was rarely felt, not due to poverty, but preference of others to himself. Who knew the time of day by sun and the direction by the stars, who would walk amongst his enemies without a single guard. Always just, always truthful, conscious of the one, even if it brought discomfort to himself and those he loved. A satiated stomach his whole life was rarely felt, not due to poverty, but preference of others to himself, who knew the time of day by sun and the direction by the stars, who would walk amongst his enemies, without a single guard, devoid of any lower self, just humble and serene, eloquent, but not verbose, just precisely what he means, whom all within his company felt light and sacred cheer, whom there was not a thing within creation that he feared, who loved to play with children and run races with his wives, who would join the festivities and honor customs of all tribes. When people yelled and lost their cool around him, he was calm, who asked forgiveness for his enemies, even as they did him wrong, who kept a goat, he'd milk himself for people in his house, whose wives, when asked about him, said he was the perfect spouse who never looked down on a pauper or flattered once a prince, but called every soul unto the one without even a flinch. Every single gorgeous trait of character he had, of noble lineage, yet he was the orphan of his clan, one imbued with wisdom and piercing inner sight, yet he was the unlettered one, who would neither read nor write. All knowledge and trait of character unflawed were placed directly inside his being, directly by Allah. The way to salvation and triumph after death, to detachment and joy in life with each and every breath, to walk the righteous path and never falter come what may, And may Allah give us success in following his way. They call him el the trustworthy, the honest. And we call him beloved, our master, Muhammad. Thank you very much. Allah bless you all.